10 Ways That Podcasting Can Grow Your Business on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Thrive Themes, blazingly fast WordPress templates and plugins built to get more traffic, more subscribers, more clients, and more customers to you. To find out how Thrive Themes can turn your blog or website into a money-making work of art, go to servenomaster.com backslash Thrive Themes. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Whenever we think about entering a new business venture, whether it's podcasting, blogging, selling a local service, starting our own business, becoming a ghostwriter, whatever it is, there are certain kind of universal fears that get into our head. It'll never work. I'll never make any money. This will work for them, but won't work for me. It's a good idea, but it's not right for what I want to do with my business. We have a series of fears or stumbling blocks or reasons not to do it, but they're kind of the same for every project. The reasons not to start a blog, they're pretty much the same as the reasons not to start a podcast, same as the reasons not to write a book. We have the same pretty much negative thoughts for everything that talk us into not doing something. So I don't really want to harp on the negative today. I'm very aware of those. I've been through all those. And I went through them when I was thinking about starting my own podcast. Oh, what if I make mistakes? What if I miss an episode? What if no one likes it? What if no one listens? But instead, I want to focus on the positives that get me really excited. And I've got a list of my 10 biggest positives, the things I most love about podcasting and how they can help you grow your business. The first of those, number one, is that podcasts are easy to consume. As someone who consumes a great deal of podcasts, I often listen to one or two every single day. The thing I love about it is it's so convenient. Radio shows are in the moment. If you listen to radio, it's all about right now and it's no longer relevant tomorrow. Podcasts are really designed and created in a way that even if you listen to an episode 10 years later, it's still pretty good. When I find a podcast that I like, I often go back and I listen to the latest episode. If I like it, then I go all the way back to episode one. Because they're so easy to consume, we have a great deal of control as the listeners when we choose to listen. You're listening right now when you feel like it. You might be in the bathroom, you might be in the car, maybe you're on the treadmill. You can listen to this on your iPad, your Android. You can listen through Stitcher, through iTunes, through all sorts of different ways, through your iPhone, through my website. There's so many different ways to consume that you have total control over the experience. Radio hasn't quite gotten there yet. I know that radio is trying to adapt and they keep trying to come up with new different ways to compete. And satellite radio, same thing. Satellite radio is trying to do the same thing where they're starting to let you TiVo a little bit, like where you can record a little bit and listen to it later. But they haven't really dialed into the fact that people now want content on demand. I want to listen to it when I feel like it. I haven't watched the TV show live in not 10 years, but pretty close. Definitely more than three or four. I only watch recordings because I want to watch when I want to watch. I don't sit down at 8.45 and go, okay, there's nothing to watch for 15 minutes. I have to wait 15 minutes until the show starts. That's how television was consumed in the 1960s and 70s. Now things have shifted. We've shifted to an on-demand marketplace. People want things when they want them. That's our mindset. That's why I love podcasting. Uh, The second thing I love about podcasting is that it's really future-proof. The way episodes are designed, even if you listen to this episode in 5, 10, or 20 years, it'll still be relevant because I'm still talking about things that are interesting, that are dynamic. And as someone who dabbled with podcasting way back in 2007, 2008, my first podcast, much has changed in the last 10 years. The technology has changed about 10%. I'm kind of surprised at how little has changed, to be honest with you. And even basically a few of the tools I was using back then I don't use anymore, but plenty of people are using those tools. So they have even kind of faded out. So the way podcasts are delivered, the way the technology is handled really is it pretty static. It's kind of achieved the level it's going to get to. We're used to consuming them in a very specific way. I think podcasts will be locked into being delivered via RSS feed for a very long time. And that's basically, RSS is the way that podcast episodes are delivered to iTunes and to everyone else. It's kind of your listing. Working on something that people will read way in the future is great. One of the things I learned when I first started blogging, I used to blog and everyone used to do this where you'd post the date of the episode, like you're in the news. News stories, people always want to know exactly when it's published. So they say, oh, you know, December 11th, 1753. You know, even using military times, you know, exactly when it came out. And it's really locked in time. But the more you separate your message from time, the more future-proof you become. So rather than saying, this is an episode and giving the date of the episode, 
Instead, it's about each topic. And you can listen to my podcast episodes really in almost any order. I very rarely mix and match what I'm talking about or reference previous episodes. I don't do that too often. Sometimes I do. But the value there is that someone can jump in and just listen to the topics they want to. For example, if you listen to an interview podcast, you can just jump and listen to the interviews of the people you like. Sometimes I'll listen to an episode that's two or three years old, but it's the person being interviewed that I really want to listen to. Number three is that you get access to a new audience. People who listen to podcasts are different from people who read blogs or different from people who spend all their time on Facebook. Not everyone online does all the same things. There are plenty of people who use Facebook and never use Twitter. There are plenty of people who use Twitter and would never use Snapchat. Not every single person dwells in every single marketplace. So you're now reaching out to a brand new market and you can find people who are interested in your message, but they're not really readers. So about two years ago, most of my consumption of content online was via videos on YouTube. But after a while, I shifted away from that. And now I either read from a couple of blogs that I follow, just two or three, or I listen to podcasts. So even over time, the way we consume content will change. And allowing your audience to reach you in different ways is very powerful. And you get access to people that don't have the patience or the time to sit in front of a computer and read blog posts all the time. There are plenty of people that want to enjoy my content, but really prefer audio content. There are people that only listen to my audiobooks, that only listen to podcasts, and would never read a blog post. And you could be one of them. And so accessing those people is very valuable because there's not a lot of competition. Most people aren't reaching out to them. And so you get access to an audience and they become big fans. And it's really wonderful to have this new audience. Number four is that it's very fast and cheap to create a podcast and podcast episodes. I've been sick for the past couple of days. I've been sick for about three days, which means I'm behind on my recording. So this morning, I'm starting to feel just a little bit better. I'm going to try and record as many episodes as I can. I've got the outlines written for about seven or eight episodes. And if I can record all of them, that's great. That means that I'll be about a week ahead. And I've discovered that because I do every day episodes, because I release episodes every day, I need to be about five or 10 episodes ahead to give my editors time to edit all the audio for me. I use a service that edits my episodes and giving them enough time to get it ready, that really helps. So I need to be a little bit ahead of schedule. Before, when I first started, I was editing it myself. I was recording, editing, and putting all together the same day. It just takes too long because of the volume I do. But if you're just doing one episode a week, like most podcasts out there, you can create content very, very quickly. For me, each episode I put out, this recording, it takes me about five minutes to write the outline and 25 minutes to record it. And a blog post, however, takes me way longer. To put out a good blog post will take me two or three hours to write like a full length blog post, tweak it, add in the images, add in the underlining and the highlighting and the bolding and all that stuff. It takes time doing the research, finding the links, but writing a podcast and putting out podcasts is very quick. And if you're in a space where it's entertainment-based or it's opinion-based, even easier. You just record yourself talking for 25 minutes and people will enjoy it. It's the fastest way to create content that I know of. I'm a big fan of audio content. That's why I do mostly videos. I still do some books. I'm still writing, in the middle of writing four books right now, but I mostly uh, create video products and audio products because it's quicker for me to just record from an outline. Number five is that podcasting opens the door to experts. It's very hard to walk up to a complete stranger who you look up to in business and say, oh, I'd really love to talk to you. I want to learn about your business. But as soon as you say, oh, I'd love to interview for my podcast, my audience would love to hear your message, it becomes very easy. So it opens the door to experts in a way that you wouldn't have gotten access to in the past. Everyone likes how it feels to be famous. Getting interviewed on a podcast, getting interviewed on television, getting interviewed on the radio, all of it feels good. So you can approach people that before you kind of had nothing to offer and you can just say, I'd love to interview for my podcast. I think my audience would love to hear you. They're never going to say how big is your audience or any of that stuff. They'll go, oh, great. I'd love to do it. And that gives you access to something really cool. It gives you a chance to expand your networking. And as with everything else I talk about, it always leads back and connects to networking. Networking can accelerate every business. And this is the way podcasting actually accelerate your networking. I'm going to an event in March. You know, I go to two events a year. I do one in Thailand in November, December, depending on when they schedule it. Actually, the one I'm going to do in March is usually in January. They keep pushing the date back, which is fine by me. I like having the separation. And my plan is to bring my recorder with me and I'm going to record probably 10 or 20 podcast interviews while I'm there with people that I normally wouldn't get access to or it would be normally a bit of a hassle. You know, I don't like to schedule things way in advance, but sitting down with someone real quick saying, hey, let me record us talking for 15 minutes. That's easy to do. And I'm going to score as many of those as I can to put together some really amazing episodes. 
And people that you normally wouldn't get access to will do that in a second. Hey, I'd love to interview my podcast. You're giving them a value, giving them a little bit more credibility, especially when you first entering a new industry, having something to offer right out the gate is very good. Saying, I'd love to interview for my blog feels like appearing in a newspaper and that's okay, but it takes more time. It's way more exciting to simply do an audio interview. People respond a little more positively and you can start connecting with more and more experts. And after a while, experts will start emailing you hoping to get an appearance. Number six is that you stand out from the crowd. Very few businesses start and very few of those maintain a podcast. Most podcasters quit. And the reason they quit is because they don't have a plan from the beginning and they don't really know where they're going. But when you see and use your podcast to grow your business, then it can be part of your long-term strategy. You can use your podcast to form networking connections, to grow your business, and to become a way to reach these new audiences. And all of those things are great. And the fact that you have an asset no one else has means you stand out. So every single person who wants to learn about left-handed history, let's say your whole podcast, your whole business is all about historical left-handed heroes. And there are 50 companies talking about left people, you know, famous historical left-handed people, but you're the only one with a podcast. Well, now you stand out. You're the only person delivering audio content and it makes you a little bit different. See, I'm always looking for ways to be a little interesting, be a little different. And this is one of the ways that happens. Now we have something that makes us unique and that's really great. So the more you can stand out, the better. I know there's that saying, uh, you know, the tall nail gets hammered down. And then I think in Australia, they say the tall poppy gets cut off, but that's who we want to be in this business. You want to be the one who stands out. Number seven is that you build trust and rapport with your audience. The more you feel like you know me as a person, as an individual, the more likely you are to follow me, listen to me, take my advice and purchase things from me. That's what rapport really is. I want you to feel a connection with me. And the more you see me, the stronger that connection comes. The lowest level of connection is if you just see something I've written. That's okay. A level above that is if you hear my voice. And above that is video. And then of course the highest level is face-to-face. Podcast allows you to create a lot of really quick content where you can create a lot of rapport with people. See, I don't do a lot of videos. I do some, but putting together a video, there's a lot more challenges. I have to comb my hair. I have to shave my beard. I have to get the lighting right. I have to find the right location outside, dealing with the sun, which is always moving around. Uh, There's constant construction around me. Right now, I can see at least three different construction projects. I don't know why, but there's always at least one saw going off in the background where I live. And trying to record video with all that stuff is 10 times harder. Trying to record video inside my house is impossible because of lighting issues. Trying to record outside, I have all these other challenges. So for me, the right balance is podcasting. It's much quicker. And even when I had a whole studio set up, putting together video takes a lot longer. You can't just quickly do it when you get in the mood. This morning, I go, I want to record a podcast. And I can sit over, turn on the mic, and start recording. There's not as much setup. So it's a really good balance. And the more people hear your voice, the more people get to know you as a person, the more likely they are to come back again and again and again. Number eight, getting into the real reason we get into podcasting is you get more leads and more customers. There's this idea that if someone visits your website and doesn't buy on the first time, they'll never buy anything from you. You'll never hear from them again. And that's ridiculous. A lot of people and smart people wait until they're sure. As much as you might have really gotten excited by my book, Maybe you want to spend a little more time getting to know the rest of my message, reading all of my old blog posts, listening to all my podcast episodes. And then you feel like, okay, now I kind of get this guy. And yeah, I understand his products now. And that's really the flow you want to offer people. People need time to get to know you. And you'll get more leads and more customers because you'll get access to those new audience. But also a lot of people come to me through other forms of traffic, through Amazon or through finding me on Google or through a friend of a friend or hearing about me on money in different ways. And then they kind of get engaged with my podcast and get to know me. And then they go, you know what? Okay. I do want to get some emails from this guy, or I do want to check out some of this guy's products. That's the flow that we want to give people access to. And it's very, very valuable to be able to communicate with your audience in a long-term way. And this allows them to feel rapport with you and then more likely to trust and buy from you, or even just give you their email address. Number nine is engagement, which really builds on that idea, which is where your customers feel like it's a two-way street. As you will discover, if you email me and if you already email me, you know, if you email me, I reply. Now, if you email me the last few days, I might not reply because I've been sick the last few days. I haven't turned the computer on. But in general, I check my email once a day and I try to reply to every single person who sends me a message. And a lot of that comes from podcasts. People email me off of my podcast more than any other medium because they feel, okay, I hear this guy's voice. I kind of get to know this guy. I want to connect with him. I'm going to send him an email and see what's up. So people feel more comfortable engaging with you, connecting with you, sending in questions, 
after hearing your voice in a podcast. And the great thing about podcasts as well is you can have people send in questions. You can have people send in ideas. You can have people send in little songs. You play in there, but there's a lot of things you can do to raise up that engagement level. So I could do episodes where I take questions that people email me all the time and read the question, record the answer, and make that podcast episode. And it could be like Jonathan's mailbag. I could do that once a week to increase engagement. It's something I might do. I tend to, as soon as I get a question, email the answer back right away. But that's another way you can approach the questions you get and use it to increase engagement. Uh, number 10 is that podcasting gives you new opportunities and JV deals. People will hear your podcast and want to partner with you, do business with you. Your guests will say, hey, let's do a project together. Let's promote something together. I'm in the middle of negotiating with a couple of different people on some really cool project ideas specifically because of this podcast. They go, I love what you're doing with your podcast. They know that I have a really big podcasting course I've been working on for a long time that's just been released and it's just ready now for general public. I'm really excited about to help you kind of build a podcast if that's the direction you want to go in and really give you all the tools. And so having a great podcast, teach people a podcast gives me access to these amazing JV deals, amazing partnerships where people want to work with me, want to promote offers with me, want to kind of partner with me. So people will approach you when they hear your voice and have these really cool opportunities. I'm always trying to find new ways to help you grow your business because that's what this is all about. Is that That's kind of the message of Serve No Master. So as you're looking at how to grow your business, I want you to think about uh, different directions to go in. And each of these directions is very valuable and can really help you accomplish some amazing things. So think about what you're going to do this year and what you're going to do to grow your business. For a long time, I discounted a couple of things that have recently become a big part of my business. For a long time, I thought, oh, podcast, it's too much hassle. It's too much this, it's too much that. And it's kind of become my main way of connecting my audience. I do a lot more podcasts than I do blog post now. Every podcast episode, I write a blog post to go with it. So I'm doing five blog posts a week to go on top of these episodes. I don't really create additional content. I get to kind of put out all of my ideas and it really helps me connect with my audience. It's something I'm very excited about. So whatever type of business you're in, whether you are in a business to business sales, whether you're in entertainment, whether even if you're designing shirts, there's a lot of value to creating quick, fast content that does a lot of engagement. Instead of paying someone else to write blog posts, you can do your own podcast episodes in less time for less money and create more engagement. It's really a win, win, win all around. And these are 10 reasons that podcasting can grow your business this year. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Serve No Master podcast. Make sure to subscribe so that together we can achieve true freedom.